Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening everyone. It's been a day of suspense for Tasmania's Labor Party, with Parliament's newest MP, Madeleine Ogilvie, yet to reveal just who she'll align herself with. The former Labor member was elected last night, but spent today in hiding, keeping her political ambitions close to her chest. A resigned MP and his replacement standing side by side a little over a year ago. Following the shock departure of Labor's Scott Bacon, former member Madeleine Ogilvie was last night officially re-elected to take his seat in Parliament. Following the recount of the resigned members' ballot papers, Madeleine Ogilvie has been elected to that vacancy. The election takes effect from today. Before losing her seat at last year's election, rifts formed between the Conservative politician and her Labor colleagues. Today she remained out of the spotlight and out of Parliament, yet to reveal if she'll stick with Labor or go independent or even Liberal. Political leaders heading into question time this morning were also in the dark about her plans. Yeah, we've started having discussions and I obviously congratulate Madeleine on her re-election and look forward to working with her. I'll let her make that decision. I respect her right to do that. Um, clearly the Labor Party aren't keen on seeing her back, or not all of them. Um, it's like an episode out of Labor's Got Talent. Um, are they going to vote to keep her or boot her? Miss Ogilvie only spoke out on social media, saying she's concerned about stability in Parliament, a possible hint she could bolster the government's numbers, potentially stealing Sue Hickey's limelight. You've had a balance of power for a long time now. Do you think she might potentially take that away from you? Well, as I've been saying, I think she'll st steal my broomstick. <laughs> but um, I don't really mind, as long as there's always people in the parliament agitating for change and looking for ways to do things better. All is expected to be revealed when parliament returns tomorrow. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Part of a major Hobart building site was forced to shut down this morning as small bits of a crane fell 60 metres to the ground. WorkSafe Tasmania is investigating the incident with the union saying it's a miracle no one was hit by the objects. Our reporter John Hunt has more. It was a scary situation for workers at the Parliament Square redevelopment at 8.30 this morning. Contractor Voss Construction was forced to shut down after pieces from the jib of a crane became loose and plummeted to the ground, landing metres away from workers. Site developer Sitter says a bolt, nut and washer came undone and fell off the crane. The 60 metre structure is just metres off Murray Street, which is a popular road for cars and pedestrians. Richie Hassett from the CFMEU says it's a miracle. No one was seriously injured or worse. They're roughly about six inches long um, and a couple of inches thick. Had the potential for a fatality. Workplace Safety Tasmania has been notified and has begun its own report into how this incident occurred. In a statement, they say it serves as a reminder to all construction businesses to remain vigilant about the risks of falling objects. We contacted Voss for comment, but they didn't return our calls before deadline. The union claims it's the latest in a number of issues that have occurred on site. We've been down on site a number of occasions and flabbergasted by the standard of safety on the site. Um, it's really disappointing. SETA Group says work on all other parts of the site will continue as normal. However, all crane operations have been halted until an interstate specialist inspects the condition of the structure. Tasmanian fire crews are preparing to fly to Queensland to offer their help and expertise in bringing the blazes under control. The fire service has already met with its interstate counterparts committing to sending assistance. It comes after hundreds of interstate and international firefighters flew to Tasmania earlier this year to form a critical part of our firefighting effort. We're looking for, forward to opportunities to repay the kindness that was shown to us uh, in our fire season last year. Uh, we're in dialogue now about sending uh, some of our Tasmanian resources. The number of crews being sent to Queensland will be determined this week. What's in a name? Well, apparently quite a lot. A new bill before state parliament would slap heavy fines on anyone for the misuse of a place name. But it's triggered a furious response from the Aboriginal community, the Greens and lawyers. Do you live in Yawnceston or Slobart? 
ever had a weekend away in Snellens? The government's new bill around place names isn't going over well. It's another attempt at cultural genocide. We saw the first attempt um, in the 1820s and 30s and now it's come round again. The legislation would abolish the independent naming board and make an offence out of misrepresenting a place name. The Tasmanian Aboriginal Centre says it's an attack on dual naming as it seeks to rename 14 locations around the state. They're not the only ones angry. It's a shambles. It's, it's a, look, it's a little bit of redneckery. It is quite a comical piece of legislation when one reads it and tries to, tries to make sense of it and tries to make sense of the motive. Um, but at the same time, it's also quite a frightening piece of legislation. The state government says the bill won't affect colloquial or Aboriginal names. The penalty provisions in no way impedes freedom of speech. A heavy fine of up to $8,400 would be slapped on those who use a name in a misleading way. Such instances could include a sale property deliberately advertised in a different suburb. The Premier denies the legislation is a power grab. In the old Act, the Minister had the power to overrule the board following an objection. In the new Act, the Minister may only approve a recommendation. The Aboriginal Centre is promising to put up a bitter fight. We won't stand for it and we'll be doing the best that we can, uh, including going to prison if we have to, uh, to stop this absolute nonsense. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Stroke is one of the biggest killers in Australia, affecting hundreds of Tasmanians each year. A new mobile health check machine is allowing residents to check their stroke risk in a fast, easy way. Colin Williams is a six-time stroke survivor. I didn't have any warning on any of them. In fact, I'd been to the doctor three or four days before uh, with an elbow injury and she didn't check my blood pressure. He was only in his early 50s when he suffered his first. The now 73-year-old is one of the lucky ones, having very few long-term effects. So I got fairly confused and my thinking wasn't as straight as it should have been. That's really the only major impediment I had after the strokes. That's gradually improved, I think. The Stroke Foundation has launched its health check machine at Launceston Library to give Tasmanians the chance to make sure their health is in order. The check takes only four minutes and detects blood pressure, heart rate, body fat and overall stroke risk. I'm encouraging everybody, no matter what age, to get out there, check your head. If you haven't done it recently, go and check whether you are in line for possible stroke because if you can avoid it, and they are avoidable, that's a good thing. Most strokes are avoidable if people do the right thing. Tasmania has the highest rate of stroke per capita in the country. It's predicted there will be almost 1,500 cases this year alone, with more than 12,000 stroke survivors living in the community. It's been nine years since Colin had his last stroke. He said it's simple lifestyle changes that make all the difference. Kept well with uh, exercise, right diet, and I regularly monitor my blood pressure. The health check machine will be travelling to the University of Tasmania and Launceston Aquatic Centre later this year. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. Tasmania has scooped the pool at this year's Australian Search and Rescue Awards, with 13 locals being recognised. Six police officers, a paramedic and a pilot were honoured for their work in winching an injured climber to safety in challenging conditions after he fell at Cape Hoy's totem pole in February. Five Tasmanians were also recognised for providing assistance to a woman who fell from the top of Parsons Falls near Lake Mackenzie in April. Paramedics say the group's quick thinking and response before they arrived saved the woman's life. There were 25 award recipients across the country. An agreement has been reached between King Island Council and a regional express following a long-running dispute over airport fees. Rex has announced a new community fare scheme offering $99 flights between the island and Melbourne. Last year, Rex temporarily axed four flights from its weekly service after the council increased its airport fees. New landing charges have been agreed upon for the next 12 months. There was an unusual sight on the Tasman Bridge this morning with a truck caught in a tricky situation. It appeared too high to fit under the Glenorchy overpass, so it had to back up, leaving a stream of waiting cars. After causing some traffic delays, the truck was finally able to get back onto the right road without causing any damage. 
Tasmanian tourism operators are preparing for another summer influx of cruise ship passengers. Over coming months, a total of 130 vessels are set to sail here, bringing hundreds of thousands of people. Tasmania is gearing up to host more of these floating cities. The upcoming cruise ship season stretching from October to June. Overall for the entire state it's about 130 visits. We're looking in Hobart from an increase from 63 visits to 65. The CEO of the National Cruise Ship Association sharing industry insights to local tourism operators today. Tasmania a growing market for operators. When the ratings are high that means that that itinerary, that destination will stay on itineraries. Tasmania and, and Hobart in particular rates highly and has done for the last 20 odd years. Tasports estimates over 126,000 passengers will disembark at Hobart alone and the city will also host three ships around the time of the Sydney to Hobart yacht race. Great opportunity for them to, to be right on top of the fireworks, to watch the, and engage with the taste of Tasmania at a really special time of year. With tourists also arriving by plane and road, hotels, restaurants and attractions will be bursting at the seams. Mr Heroy says the sector can handle the numbers. The port can handle the infrastructure and the uh, handle the visitation and the, the passengers, the, the industry operators are keen to have that business at that time of year. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. In an Australian first, Tasmanian emergency workers now have access to a new online hub offering physical and mental health support. The MyPulse tool was officially launched today, designed to encourage first responders to better look after their health. The system includes mental health training, fitness challenges and the opportunity to undertake a confidential screening to formally assess their well-being. If they again come up amber or red, they'll get a phone call within a short period of time and offer a coaching and supporting face-to-face uh, -face, uh, within a short period of time to help them deal with the issues that they have. Within hours of the Hub's launch, hundreds of staff had already started using its programs. Art lovers were left out in the cold today when a faulty heating and cooling system caused the Queen Victoria Gallery to shut its doors. The council says the move is just a precautionary measure while the issue is fixed. Former Launceston Blues coach Sam Lonigan is bound for Punt Road with the Tasmanian set to begin a new role as a development coach at the Richmond Football Club from next season. Lonigan played 79 games for Essendon between 2006 and 2013 before being named TSL Coach of the Year in 2017 after leading Launceston to a preliminary final in his first season as head coach. Well, it's developed into one of the TSLW's fiercest rivalries and this Saturday at Blunstead Arena, Glenorchy and Clarence will once again go head-to-head -head with a spot in the grand final against the undefeated Launceston awaiting the winner. It's definitely a big game every time we play them and yeah there's always that angst before the game that you really want to win and you know so you just want to get out there and do it. Yeah we are looking forward to it. Um, everyone is a bit nervous although we've won all the games this year but doesn't mean anything come finals time. Clarence are coming off a win over North Launceston last weekend with the Pies keen to bounce back from their semi-final loss to the Blues. The opening bounce is at 9.30am. South Hobart have held their own against the Central Coast Mariners overnight, but the A-League side was a class above the boys from Darcy Street, while a keen group of Tasmanian sailors are preparing to compete against the world's best. Relishing the opportunity to test themselves against some of the best players in the country, South Hobart refused to concede anything early against the Mariners, but half an hour into play, the Tasmanians couldn't hold on any longer as the visitors struck. Heading into half-time, still very much in it. Hopes of an upset win were quickly quashed when play resumed. The Central Coast slotted two through the back of the net in quick succession to make it a three-goal buffer. In desperate need of a response, South young gun Bradley Lacaselljack stepped up to claw back some of the difference, but the Mariners answered back just minutes later to put the finishing touches on the 4-1 win. Meantime, a group of Tasmanian sailors will be out to make their mark on the international stage with four Hobart-based crews readying to compete at the upcoming SB20 French National and Grand Slam events in here in the lead-up to the World Championships beginning on October 19. It's a big fleet, there's 80 boat fleet. The last world titles that we had here, uh, we had 60 boats and the French came here and, and did you know, very, very well and 
So yeah, it's a big task, but I think we can uh, take it to them. It's always going to be testing going into any competition, and world championships especially, but we've done our homework and we're trying to prepare for the best possible outcome and we're going to sell our hardest over there and give it a good crack. And finally in sport, Tasmanian race car driver Alex Peroni is still awaiting news from doctors in Italy on whether or not he'll need an operation on his back after fracturing his vertebrae during a horror Formula 3 crash last weekend. Peroni is currently recovering in hospital in Monza and could return home to Hobart within the week, providing he doesn't need an operation. It's unlikely he'll race again this year. Good evening. Some temperatures today up to 6 degrees above average. Nice along the east coast. Friendly beaches the top with 23. Hobart 21 today. Launceston cooler on 16. Burnie 18. Devonport 14 degrees. St Helens Grove and Ooze all 21. Smithton 17. Lyawini and King Island 15. Flinders Island and Low Head 14. Sunny weather washed over the north and east coast but cloud did develop over the west before extending across the state. Most of Australia is cloud free. There is that frontal band to our west starting to push over the state a little over the bite as well. That cold front crosses tomorrow as another moves near Western Australia with that front due here late on Friday. So a bit of action going on. Winds northwestly at 20 to 30 knots reaching 35 knots over the west and south. Shifting west southwestly as the day progresses tomorrow swells up to 4 metres. With that uh, strong wind we have a severe weather warning for central, southern and eastern areas for potentially damaging winds. A gale warning from Wineglass Bay to Sandy Cape and the South West Lakes and a strong wind warning for remaining coastal waters including the Central Plateau Lakes. Forecast for tomorrow, 16 the top for Hobart, morning showers and winds easing, 15 the top for Signet, a morning shower or two, New Norfolk the same, 16 the maximum. Launceston a high of 19 degrees, winds easing after a shower early, Devonport the same, 17 degrees, 17 for Campbelltown with a similar forecast. Burnie morning showers, 17 the top, 14 for Strawn. Smithton morning showers and 15 degrees. St Helens tomorrow, 19 the top, winds easing, morning showers clearing. Swansea 18 degrees and 19 for Fingal. On Friday, a shower over the west early, extending statewide before easing. Areas of frost and another dusting of snow. A sunny start over the east on Saturday. A late shower expected over the northwest, but a bit more rain over the southwest. And on Sunday, a few showers mainly over the west and north. Snow to 800 metres. Sunny for Perth and Adelaide. A shower at 19 degrees in Melbourne, partly cloudy over Canberra. Sunny weather and warm for Sydney and Brisbane. So the puffer jackets are off and the tank tops are on in Hobart, currently 19 degrees. Launceston partly cloudy in 12 and right now it's a bit cloudy over Devonport and 11. Some interesting weather for the rest of the week, Joe. There is indeed balmy Hobart. That's all from News Team for now. Thanks so much for your company. We'll see you a bit later with updates. Bye-bye.